What's going on, Infinity TV? It is the one and only DJ Treacy Treese. Today is Friday, July 21st, and these are the Braves. And these are the Braves. These are the Braves. You know what it is. Welcome back to the Breaks, Infinity TV fans. It is the one and only DJ, Treacy Trees, and I am back like I never left. If you follow our channel, you will remember that last week I was not here, and the WNBA was on a break, so you know what? I feel like I play for the WNBA more than I cover the WNBA, so I went on vacation as well. I hung out in San Diego, which was fire. It was my first time, like, feeling the vibes. Um, definitely a small town in comparison to LA. I know like San Diego people are going to hate me for saying that because evidently they feel some kind of way, but San Diego was a vibe. It felt like I was getting out of the city. I could have a mental reset. I sat by the water. We walked in the pride parade. We got like a uh, hundred mosquito bites that we didn't know about was like, they weren't in my face, but when I came home, I had mosquito bites. So I was kind of happy about the trip. Everybody needs a little break. You feel me? They went on a break. You should take a break, but keep watching the breaks. So let's go right into our break it or leave it for today. Y'all. I have been on the internet talking all week, asking people a fun, would you rather question? And the would you rather is, would you rather have $54 million in seven rings, which is what Robert Ori's career uh, yielded, right? Or would you rather have $300 million and no rings, which is James Harden, basically, y'all. And my answer to this is there's no right or wrong answer. It really all depends on you and what you want from your life. Me personally, I enjoy money. I feel like there's no experience that I want to feel that money can't buy. A lot of the people in the comments was basically saying they wanted glory and notoriety. But I feel like I do that for myself. I don't feel like I need some organization to give me a ring. I would take my $300 million and I would buy a bunch of rings. I could wear a different ring a day, two rings on one finger. I could give my friends some rings. We all could have rings. And Drake actually just went viral for um Drake actually just went viral for uh he he did his own NBA championship y'all so what the, what he did was he has this big compound in Toronto y'all know Drake is from the six right so he invited all his friends over he put together basketball teams and everybody had jerseys and colors and everything just like they were playing for the NBA it was kind of crazy then he did, like, a championship. He hit the game winner. He had a press conference. Boom. They was all drinking. That's the vibes that I would be on. If I had $300 million, I would make my own league, invite my friends, eat sushi. You know what I mean? Because who really wants to be – you know how hard Robert Ori had to work for them seven rings? To be honest, are you willing to trade that currency for – the, the mouths that's on your body, all them teams he played with, he really wasn't the main guy, to be honest, too. So all y'all that's talking about the glory and one in the seven rings, a lot of people don't even know that Robert Ori has seven rings, to be honest. He's uh, now being a commentator and telling us a lot more about it, but only really avid basketball fans know him uh, uh, for that. So for me, I would take the money. Y'all drop in the comments, let me know what y'all would do there. But also, you know, James Harden is in a position that he's in right now. And I'll talk about that a little bit later in the show because money gets you so far, but I don't think it's making him happy because he got $300 million and can't still find a team to work for. But let's move on from that. Let's go into the NBA breakaway report. And Draymond Green is one of my favorite basketball trolls of all time. Patrick Beverly is a close second. Um, Dennis Rodman, he's le he's a legend. I don't even think he can be on that because he was one of those one of those trolls as well. So Draymond and JP had that physical altercation in their um, practice that the video magically leaked. I don't know how that happened. Like I don't know that I could even get footage from <laughs> the the Sparks uh, practice facility. Like, who let that footage get leaked? But anyway, neither here nor there of Draymond hitting 
um, JP. So it was no secret that Jordan Poole and Draymond were beefing the whole season. Um, Draymond has continued to talk and chirp since then. I think he was really respectful in the season. He was suspended for some games and came back and continued to run with what he was running with. Um, but now Draymond is talking about it on his podcast because he is a very accomplished podcaster as well. And that is why I think his retirement plan should be sooner rather than later, to be quite honest. But he's on his podcast talking about his dad and, you know, um, well, his dad tweeted and said, basically, Jordan don't play for the team no more. So... I don't got to be quiet about this. Call Draymond the B-word. Draymond basically said men don't call each other the B-word, and he's beefing with his daddy. Now it's on TMZ and everything. This just seems like the beef that just keeps on getting crazier like the Netflix show. You know what I mean? It's like (laughs) watching a car crash, and it just keeps getting crazier and crazier. But my advice to all of y'all on the Internet and Jordan Poole's dad is don't fall into Draymond's trap. He just playing with y'all, y'all. He from the Midwest, Draymond from Michigan. He used to talking shit, and that's just uh, the name of the game. He's messing around on his podcast. I don't think he really has a dog in the fight or even cares what Jordan thinks. Um, I hope JP plays good for the Wizards, but it's just crazy how this gossipy kind of blog stuff makes it way to the in- makes its way to the NBA, and people swear that we want to keep the drama out of it. We just want to keep it around the game, but some of the top leading stories are like gossip story so shout out to Draymond for uh keeping it lit and keeping us with new content to constantly keep talking about and of course check out his podcast um I think that's gonna be the highlight of his season I don't see uh the the go to state warriors doing much other than that let's go into unbreakable something I've been wanting to talk about so global warming has been a thing since I was a kid I didn't know that it was going to accelerate at the level that it's accelerated. I guess they were telling us about it. Global warming was something that was at least on the forefront of my mind. But it seems like the Earth's settings were on air fryer. He's on fire! We thought we had some time. I think we thought we were slow cooking in the crock pot, but the air in the in the L.A. has been very, very hot. A lot of people complained that, you know, uh, summer, had, summer hadn't showed up because it was rainy. We hadn't seen the sun with that June gloom. But July I came back with vengeance, y'all. It is hot, and we just experienced the hottest day on earth in Death Valley for y'all that didn't know know that this past week. Temperatures got up to 130 degrees um, in Death Valley, which is the lowest point um, on earth at 200, I'm sorry, in North America, at 282 feet below sea level. So tourists were literally flocking to go sit in this hot-ass valley on the hottest day in on earth. So, um... <laughs> Just seems like play super games, win super prizes. Here's some of the quotes, y'all. One tourist came from Arkansas, which is crazy to me because that's already volatile weather in Arkansas with all them tornadoes and torrential downpours and and dry, humid heat. So, okay, you want to come out here and do that. But he said, the heat here, 128 degrees is the real deal. Yeah, man, it's the hottest day on earth. You travel. Another dude from Ohio, I feel like I'm in an oven. Yeah, you're literally baking 282 feet below sea level, dog. It's hot. You came He's all the way idiot. out here for that. Uh, uh, another dude said, it's kind of like being in the air fryer in the park, which confirms my theory that Earth is on air fryer settings. You heard it from this guy who went and stood at the bottom of a valley on the hottest day on Earth. So get y'all some sunscreen. Make sure you're going out regularly because I think your skin can adjust, but I don't know. I got a lot of melanin, so I don't really feel like it's going to bother me that much. But get out and get you some sun, y'all. It's getting hot. Enjoy it. Stop complaining so much. We're going to go to a quick commercial break to pay some of these bills, but you keep it locked, and I got more of the breaks coming for you. What's up, y'all? This is Lexi Brown with the LA Sparks, and you're watching Infanity TV. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services.
A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of... What's going on, y'all? You are back with DJ Treacy Trees on your favorite Friday episode of The Breaks. I was going in on the first half of the show, so I'm going to just keep going in and keep running my mouth for the second part, y'all. Let's go into breaking the rules. NBA flopping. I want to talk about it. And I wore my Lakers shirt because everybody swears that LeBron is the number one flopper in the NBA, but that is not a fact because they had to make a rule about it. It just couldn't be him, y'all. So stop all of the nonsense with saying he created the flop. People been flopping for days. So I want to read y'all the actual rule because – This proves the NBA is a game that's constantly evolving. Y'all see that they've added the midseason tournament. They also making new rules. So this game is changing, evolving, and they making new rules. We saw that last year with the Coaches Challenge. I'm excited to see how this flopping rule is going to be enforced. So let me read it. Under the new rule, when a game official calls a flop or a physical act that reasonably appears to be unintended to cause the officials to call a foul on another player. That's the definition of a flop. That is how they are defining a flop. A physical act that reasonably appears to be intended to cause the officials to call a foul on another player. So they're basically looking at game footage and seeing if you maybe put your body in a position that would lead the officials to call a foul and create creating the atmosphere for the foul, or you are uh, pretending to have got hit, which we see a lot of people pretend they got hit in the face. Wimby just did it in the summer league game when he was pretending like uh, he got hit in the neck when he really his ankles was just broke. So that would be the flop foul cough if you just need a reference for something fresh that just happened. (laughs) Okay, so it says the offending player will be charged with a non unsportsmanlike technical foul and the opposing team will be awarded one free throw attempt. So you'll basically get a technical, but it's not a technical that will go against you to make you get ejected. So it's just a a regular tech with one shot, um, one free throw attempt, and it says which could be attempted by any player who is in the game when the technical foul is assessed. So, of course, they're going to put their best free throw shooter on the stripe to uh, have this technical foul because it's just an unsportsmanlike technical foul. It says a player will not be ejected from the game based on flopping violations. So they just wanted to reiterate that you will not, you can have a lot of flopping violations. (laughs) You will not be ejected from the game because of these, but that will um, interrupt the flow of the game a lot because it's going to slow it down and make them have to shoot a technical foul. You got to think about that, right? So if your team is on a 12 and 0 run and you have some kind of flop situation, now you've broken up that momentum in the game. Think about that. But also points when it comes down to the close games and you are now getting these flop calls, you could make or break a game with pretending like you got hit or not. So it may be time for all the NBA players to maybe draw back and dial back the dramatics, which I don't know if I'm a fan of because I love the drama. Okay, I live for the drama. I'm watching the game for some game, but I want some drama. Mm -hmm. A little argument feels good to me. You know, you get into it with the ref. The coach maybe gets ejected. Come on. You don't want to watch the game and just watch the ball being bounced and being passed constantly. We live for the drama. So I'm excited to see how this will be called. I don't think LeBron is going to be an offender. I think that everybody who was flopping before is going to kind of know that they're going to get called out a little bit. I'm excited to see the first flopper. Y'all tell me in the comments who you think the first flopper is going to be. Let me let me see who I think. I If I think about it by the end of the show, I'll bring it up. But I ain't really thought about who the first flopper is going to be, but it's definitely going to happen. 
Let's move into Heartbreak Hotel. Whose heart is broken this week? And unfortunately, it's Phoenix's DeAndre Aiden. He said that um, he feels like, and this is a direct quote, so I'm reading his quote. I feel like the whole world hated me. No matter how you put it, I feel like I have no fans out there. And I can feel it because the whole world is saying it. I want to talk about this because... What he's feeling is uh, just a regular human emotion. He's feeling like he's not being shown as much love as he deserves. Which, okay, DeAndre, we feel you. But really what's happening is people aren't clapping as loud as they were. There might be some people who were booing, but he's looking for that external validation, which some people on the internet probably have that problem as well, too. We all kind of search for it. But my goal, my, my message to him is get in the gym and get better. Play better. It sounds like you're feeling a little bit insecure about not playing up to your standards and the people who used to be clapping for you are maybe clapping for some other people because KD is coming to the team. Also, Bradley Beal will be on the Suns this year. So he might feel like the stepchild now who's kind of being tossed to the side. But Cinderella, all you got to do is put on them shoes and get into the gym, man. Start playing like the player that you know you can and live up to your own expectations so you won't have to be on the internet just screaming this insecurity out. You got fans out there. You've been playing in, in Arizona for a while since college. You know what I mean? A lot of people know you there. So there are fans. Just get in the gym, have an amazing season, and start feeling better about yourself. Man, ain't nobody out here hating on you like that. Just had a bad season. It's not a bad life. Moving on. Let's go to Breaking the Bank. I have an unusual story for y'all. And a lot of y'all might not know what this is, but um, there are streamers out there that are called NPC streamers. If you play video games, you know that there are NPC characters who make sounds. Back in the day, we had Mortal Kombat, the funny one that I played on my Game Boy. You know, you do a, like a fatality and a little person to come up and be like, whoopsie, or something like that. You know what I mean? Those kind of sounds. That's basically what an NP streamer is, and I know y'all think that's weird, but it's huge in the anime um, community. Because video games are played there. A lot of streamers are playing and doing a lot of different things. So there's this girl called Pinky Doll. Hashtag Pinky Doll. We're going to put that in the, in the um, name of this episode so y'all can look it up for yourself and watch the video and see what I'm talking about, right? So Pinky Doll is making $7,000 a day as an NPC streamer. And what she's doing is she's basically on TikTok. And she's, um, people are giving her gifts. So on the side of TikTok, you know, you can give gifts and then make a sound like that, right? So what she's doing is when she get that sound, she's basically emulating the sound and doing a little ka as it comes in. And people are just giving her gifts. And as she makes the sound, it's almost like a thank you. So seven thousand dollars a day is how much she's making Boom. she's now got a bunch of celebrities who follow her she's uh trying to link up with cardi b it's crazy what are we as people doing wrong what show do y'all want to see from me what noise can i make do you need me to snap on the microphone what's happening here what do i need to do to get seven thousand dollars a day because this girl has found a niche that is feeding her and building her streaming career. So shouts out to Pinky Doll for finding people who would pay you $7,000 a day in tips to make video game sounds. Girl, I am rooting for you, and I hope your business continues to grow. I will be following your page to see what tips that I can take from you in order to make my content a little better because we at Infanity TV need that $7,000 a day. All right? Let's take a quick commercial break, y'all. I'm going to finish up the show talking about uh, the last L.A. Sparks game after the WNBA break, NECA's uh, things. We got the gang back together. I want to tell you a little bit about that. Keep it locked right here on The Breaks. Hey, everyone. I'm NECA Gumake with the L.A. Sparks, and you are watching Infanity Television. <laughs> A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. Bounce it the pop, 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 p
United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. you sticking around for the last part of my show welcome back to the breaks friday edition with dj treacy trees i want to end the show talking about my girls the sparks are back i have never been happier y'all i hated that we were having such hardship all these injuries i loved having destiny henderson play for us and having all these things happen but i just miss having the gang together lexi brown was out with the injury that we just found out in the press conference with some kind of illness where she had to take antibiotics and just couldn't play basketball at all glad she's feeling a lot better and has returned to the team i had a chance to check out um i had a chance to talk to her and Lasia in the press conference so make sure y'all check out um the past episode of the lx Sparks weekly post game we actually uh now do the press conferences in the show so make sure y'all subscribe to that right here on infinity tv as well so so it was just great seeing Lexi's face, feeling her presence on the court. She immediately came back and was well adjusted. She was playing more minutes. They uh, they were assessing her mid game and she was doing great. It was also good to see Lasia playing as well. She was on a minute restriction um, because of that torn plantar fasciitis that she's been recovering from. She talked a lot about like being in the gym and like really working. She had a different um, injury than uh, Lexi. Lexi was at home and literally was bedridden and had to rest. Where Lasia was in the gym and had to work on rebuilding herself and I'm just so proud of her I'm just so proud of the LA Sparks' fortitude because this season has thrown them all kind of wild cards and things that you could not forecast to happen and there ain't no quit in them. Even last night's game against the, uh, the Minnesota Lynx, we started, we had a great first quarter. That second quarter was like, oh, my God, we about to get blown out, especially with a player like Nafisa Collier who gets hot at any moment, and she just goes off. But then they came back after halftime that third and fourth quarter and actually led by three points at one time. So they came back from a 20-point deficit, led by three. Unfortunately, we didn't hit the game winner. Um, and Carly had a little traveling uh, call that actually turned over a possession. So it was just minor things. I didn't even really look at it as a loss. And I'm glad Michael is not here because he constantly said, them girls lost that game. I know, Coach Kell, that they lost the game. Defeated. I see the numbers. I see that they lost. But what I'm saying is this was a win in terms of turning around our season and looking to make a playoff run. We did let one slip away with uh, letting the Minnesota Lynx win that game because they are ahead of us in playoff standings. But we have some games that we can take advantage of. I don't know that we'll be able to sweep Dallas, which we have a game against them uh, on Saturday, which is tomorrow. But – We've already won against Dallas. We know Arike. Uh, we we got to lock down Arike. Arike going to score. So it ain't really much that you can do there. You can try to hold her to a minimum. Satu, we need to get her in foul trouble immediately so that she can play frustrated and not have a chance to go off and get in the paint as much as, as needed. We got to slow down the pace of the game, but... Uh, uh, playing with a with a point guard like Arike is going to be hard, but I'm glad that we got Jordan Canada in there because Jordan Canada was the player of the game for the Sparks yesterday and has been constantly keeping that pace and applying pressure while all of her teammates were away and, and being injured. So you got to give major shouts out to JC, who wasn't an all-star, but she is an all-star to true Sparks fans. She's been holding us down and creating that offense when she didn't have any other guards to play with, right? So we love to see that Lexi is back, Lasia is back. Cheney, unfortunately, got an MRI and is out for another five to six weeks. But to be honest, I would rather – that Shanae, uh she tend to her, her injury in a way that's best for her, right? 
I think that sometimes, especially in the WNBA, we get players who are coming back because they feel guilty because they're taking up a roster spot and they just taping their foot up and gritting and bearing it. And that only goes so far, and I don't think that, you know, that would serve us well to be honest, we got Ray Burrell. Ray has been playing well. She's been playing great defense. She's been shooting. She's been getting some offensive stops. She slapped that girl in the game. It's a pretty rough foul, but you got to really commend her hunger, her eagerness, um, her energy that she brings to the team. Look at me sounding like Michael, right? But <laughs> uh, I do think that we can have Ray and Dierica kind of step up in those two ways. Um, as well as seeing Azare hit more th threes and spread the game. Azare, unfortunately, was in foul trouble uh, last night, and that's the only reason that the Sparks really didn't pull out that win because if Azare was in the game, she would have kept pinning them down, and she would have hit some threes and made some necessary shots. She's also been getting a lot of her own offensive rebounds. So we were talking about all the pieces coming back to the puzzle, getting the game back together, having that true Sparks team that we've – Saw at the beginning of the season where they had that great start. Unfortunately, we're on a seven-game losing streak. But we're playing against Dallas, Indiana two times at home. Come on, y'all. I'm excited to see Aaliyah Boston play at Crypto. So you'll see me at the game Tuesday. Of course, the LA Sparks Weekly Show will be there. Make sure y'all follow LA Sparks Weekly and Infanity TV on all social media platforms that you can find us, y'all. Especially YouTube because you'll see all of our drops. And follow me, DJ Treacy Treese, on Instagram. That's DJ T R I C E Y T R I C E. You can see all of my commentary as well as I share all of my LA Sparks weekly stuff there as well so thank y'all for joining us for our episode our Friday episode of the breaks going into the weekend I'm excited for some WNBA basketball this weekend keep it locked and I'll check back in with y'all next week peace